Planet Earth, home to over six billion people, all of whom have only one question on their minds. What's for dinner? This is the big world of food. I'm your host, Chef John Veronese. Do you know what a paddlefish is? Paddlefish, paddlefish. It's the best way to catch a paddlefish. Paddlefish? It's disgusting. Is that a spoonbill? Is that the expensive spoonbill? Do you know what a paddlefish is? Isn't it one of those like big, ugly fish? The elusive expensive spoonbill? I'm Chef John Veronese, and this is the big world of food. Today we're here at Rocky Ridge Quarry, and we're about to go fishing. Harvesting paddlefish. Aquaculture is the fastest growing segment of agriculture worldwide. And today we're at these beautiful quarries here at Rocky Ridge Farm with Janine and her husband Guy Raymond. How are you doing this afternoon, doing Janine? Doing great. Welcome to our farm. Well, thank you. Glad we're harvesting you. paddlefish today. What got you interested in raising paddlefish? Well, we were blessed with all these bodies of water, and we have three of them, and there are 75 acres all together. This is a 50-acre lake. And I uh, saw on um, TV, they were talking about the paddlefish in Kentucky and caviar. It was Kentucky State University, Dr. Steve Mims that was doing the speaking at that time. And uh, we, I thought that sounded really interesting. We had all this water, we may as well try it. That's right. So um, we ended up uh, going to classes with them and learning how to get started and they've helped us every step of the way so we've been really pleased with their assistance. So do you have other things in the ponds that you raise besides uh, paddlefish? We do. We have largemouth bass, we have bluegill, crappie, um, just just a lot of you know different mixes of fish but we, all, we do the paddlefish mostly for the uh, meat and the caviar. So is that why paddlefish was your, your utmost decision to, to farm raise? Yes, and it was uh, something unique. I thought that sounded like something we like to do. I always like to do something different. So that um, we got into that and put our, new, our first fish in in 2000, and it takes eight to 10 years for them to mature to have the caviar to have the eggs. That's a long time away for is. a crop to be ready, huh? It is, but we had a lot of excavating and prepare, preparations to make around the farm. Um, it was an old quarry, so we had to put bedding uh, all around the hillsides because the water needed to be fertilized. Uh, you can't have good fish production without good runoff. So we had to create the runoff on the hillsides that you see here um, to feed the fish. Because they, all they the eat. the water's really pristine because it's all spring fed also? All spring fed. It's like a big filter and it just keeps cleaning it. And so we, uh, we put the bedding on there and the fish grew two years ahead of schedule in one year. Oh wow. And they're fat little fish, very healthy, very beautiful, clean looking fish because of the uh, limestone water. We wanted to make sure all our fish was very healthy for the public before we even get into selling it. So we've had them all tested and we test with only a trace. All fish around the world have some you know, different contaminants in it, but ours just has a trace. So that makes us feel good that we can provide a good product for the public. Yeah, and I'm sure the public really wants to know that because, you know, a lot of them stem away from farm-raised product because they're worried about what they're fed, what's in the waters, how they're raised. So, you know, that's very important for, for people to know, and I'm sure they're very interested in that also. Right. So these are pretty big fish. How big do they get? Um, they can get pretty huge in river systems, and in here, the largest one we have caught so far is like 50 pounds, and they can get 70 pounds in, in this type of situation. That's a pretty big fish. Uh -huh. I know they're pretty interesting. They got a big bill on them. I know if I was swimming and rubbed up against one, I'd, uh, it'd definitely spook me a little bit. <laughs> well, they don't eat anything but zooplankton. Well, that's so a good you're thing. You're safe. <laughs> My toes are okay. <laughs> right. So, you know, the other uh, facet of this is the caviar. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Um, well, it, like I said, it takes eight to ten years for them to mature enough to even have the eggs. And uh, KSU didn't even know if this would work. And uh, they were very happy the day that we checked the fish and found eggs in the fish. And it was a very, you know, monumental day. So for this all was of a us. huge gamble for you that, that you yes. went on and took all this on and didn't know if it was quite going to work because right. the eggs are pretty much the prized possession of the whole reason of doing this. That's right. Yeah, the eggs are, are the, is the goal to go after, but the, the meat of the uh, paddlefish is awesome. 
And I've also taken that fish into competition. We've taken that to the Great American Seafood Cook-Off in New Orleans and competed against 15 other chefs that uh, competed with seafood that was sustainable to their area. Right, and we're proud of you for doing that. Well, thank you very much. So how much caviar does uh, fish actually produce? We had a 50-pound fish last year, and it produced 4.5 pounds of caviar. Wow, that's so a lot of caviar. That's quite a bit. Because the first year we did it, which was two years ago, it didn't have that much in in them. So, so we waited. Of, what kind of value does a caviar have on it? Caviar has uh, at least um, $150 a pound wholesale. Wow. You know, so retails well over 300 So that's a pretty expensive fish that you it harvested is. there. That's right. And I understand there's really interesting things that this caviar is, you know, very comparable to prized uh, Acetra caviar. Alcetra caviar comes from the Alcetra sturgeon, or Asapensa golden staliti. The fish weighs anywhere from 50 to 400 pounds and lives up to 50 years. Found in the Caspian Sea, the Alcetra caviars are by far the most popular and sought after varieties. Alcetra has a buttery flavor that is considered by many to be the most enjoyable of all caviars. Black and Caspian Seas. Right. So. Yeah, ours, our conditions here in Kentucky are very good and, and uh, produce a great crop of caviar. So very you have good caviar quality. caviar here for $20 an ounce instead of trying the $150 to $180 an ounce for the sturgeon caviar from, from across the way there. So that's pretty interesting. I've also it heard is. some stories that I found it was interesting about how the Russians are coming in here and wanting to purchase your paddlefish caviar. Right. For, yes, they, they have their buyers and they do come here to buy from the United States. So it's a, it's a good um, thing that we can help them out since they don't have their sturgeon that much anymore, that we can help out in the market and become an important part of that. Yeah. Unfortunately, some are covering it up, putting them on the black market and actually selling it as a Cetra caviar. Yes, so. we have heard that. But, but they you have know, done that, that. that has to be a, definitely a compliment that your caviar here in the, these rock quarries here you're producing that are, you know, side by side could even fool people that it is a Cetra caviar. Right. Well, the, and the good thing is, is that it's, the quality is equal to theirs. So that's the best part, is that we are producing a product that is equal in, in taste and uh, quantity to theirs. So I think it's a good thing for us to be able to find that. And with uh, aquaculture and production, um, we try to just come up with good quality fish products that uh, we can be proud of serving, that you can be proud of serving at your restaurant that's going to be extremely healthy for people. And even the uh, paddlefish meat, when you smoke it, it is, um, it's excellent taste. It's almost as good as a sliced turkey. And uh, so that with the natural omega-3 in it is such a plus. Yeah, that's really healthy. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the different markets that you're getting your product into. Um, I sell mine to, um, some restaurants around town, the um, Sealback Hotel and to the Limestone Restaurant. And Joyce Kinder uh, with Kinder Caviar and her husband Steve, they're here today. They'll be taking you out in the boat and they serve, they sell their products all over the world. Wow. The meat and the caviar. She's very well respected in the caviar market. So they do a really good job. Excellent, that is very interesting. And how much uh, water do you have? How much? Uh, this lake we're, that we're in today is 50 acres, but we have two other lakes. So it gives us a combination of about 75 acres of water. That's a pretty big area. How many fish do you think you have in there? Probably about 2,000. 2,000 fish. So far. Excellent. We keep adding more because you'll have to keep more to keep, uh, to keep getting more caviar on down the road. And how many of those 2,000 fish, are they all at the same maturity level or they just keep on reproducing themselves? They, we haven't found that they've done that yet, but I'm still holding out. Anything can happen, really. <laughs> <laughs> this is really exciting and I can't wait to harvest some of these fish and bring them in and see what they really look like in, oh, yeah. in the caviar. So You'll be pleased. They're beautiful fish. All right. I guess I'm a little partial, but um, <laughs> you got to be proud of your product. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Coming up on the big world of food, John hitches a ride with some local fishermen to snag himself a farm-raised paddlefish. Stick around. With 30 years experience in the industry, I've seen the evolution of the point of sale system from the early days of the handwritten checks to now the amazing Aloha system. Here at Berenice, we chose Aloha, first of all, for its exceptional service, but also its ease of use. We can split checks, even individual items. I can check sales reports, product mix reports. I can literally run the entire restaurant from this one computer. 
This is why Aloha is our system of choice. Make a switch you can bank on with Commonwealth Bank. Right now, open an extreme checking account and we'll give you a cash bonus. Visit switchforcash.com today. Veronese, eclectic contemporary Mediterranean cuisine, extensive wine list, four seasons patio, exciting atmosphere, fresh Kentucky proud local ingredients, vegetarian friendly, live jazz seven nights a week. For more information, call 502-899-9904. Veronese, 2106 Historic Frankfurt Avenue. Today with Kristen Malone, Sullivan University Baking and Pastry Program. How are you doing this Good, afternoon? Good, how are you? So where are you from, Kristen? I'm from right here in Louisville. I grew up in Crestwood, and I'm here locally. So. so staying local, going to school. What made you choose Sullivan University? Well, I knew I always wanted to be in some kind of cooking world, and I went to a regular university for a few years, and I decided it wasn't really my thing, so I came here, and it fits its home. Well, why baking and pastry? Culinary and baking and pastry are two completely different worlds, yes. and I felt I enjoy cooking, but my passion is baking, and when I'm in here and I'm doing my thing, it's fire, and I love it. Excellent. A lot, of, lot more detail in there. Huh? Oh, yeah. It's definitely more of an art. What do you enjoy most about Sullivan University? Um, I like the close-knit community. I know all of my teachers. I know a lot of the students. It's, it's a great environment. Everyone's here to really help you. You really feel you know, like you're wanted here and you're wanted to be successful, so. It's definitely easier to learn when you're in a comfortable environment. Exactly, and I know all my teachers and I can talk to them about anything, so. What's the most important thing that you're learning here that you think you're gonna take with you in your career? Um, I think just the basic know-how, um, all of the technicalities in each of the areas that we work with, a lot of the bread making and the cakes that we do. Uh, it's good to know every detail of it for when we get out there in the industry. Well, where are you in your program right now? I'm in my second quarter. I'm getting ready to finish with my finals, and then I'm going to go on to baking two, which is a lot of bread work and some cakes. Excellent. So what are you going to do when you graduate from Sullivan? Hopefully I want to do an apprenticeship, maybe in Europe somewhere, and go travel and, you know, I'm young, I have all the potential, so I definitely want to get that out there and experience everything I can before I can settle down into wherever I decide to go. So Definitely a smart move. What do you think you would like to do in the future, long term? What kind of goal do you have? Um, probably own a cake decorating shop, maybe work in a high restaurant, working as a pastry chef there. Um, I haven't really narrowed it down yet, but um, those are kind of where I want to go. Well, it's all about exploring the options and finding things out. Mm -hmm. So that's what I hope to do when I graduate is know exactly what I want to do by exploring every option. Oh, excellent. Well, thanks for spending some time with us this afternoon, Kristen. Thank you. Well, that was Kristen Malone from Sullivan University and future pastry chef. Interested in a career in hospitality? Give us a call at 502-456-6505 or check us out at sullivan.edu. Take your taste buds on a tour of Kentucky. A lot of fun. Watch Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs with host Tim Laird, Saturday nights at 1030 on WBKI. How to Buy brought to you by Kentucky Proud. You really don't have to be intimidated by buying fresh local fish from your market. There's just a few things that you need to know about it. And today we're here with Andrew Caparelli with the Department of Agriculture and Kentucky Aquaculture who brings small farms to local consumers with Kentucky Proud. Here we have uh, farm-raised paddlefish, freshwater prawns, and also hybrid striped bass. A few things that you need to look for is the fresh, firm flesh. Uh, when buying whole fish, you need to look for the clear eyes, nice pink gills, and tight scales. How are you doing this afternoon, Angela? I'm great. Thanks, John. We do grow all these three species along with some largemouth bass, some trout, some tilapia we have growing with the prawn. And these are available to the local consumers at some of those small independent markets, such as Value Market, through Grasshoppers. And also, you should ask your local chef if they'll prepare it for you. 
Well, there you go. Either visit your local market or contact Angela at kyagr.com. What's the best way to cook a, a paddlefish? What's a paddlefish? Paddlefish is a fish that its fins are kind of like paddles. What's the best way to catch a paddlefish? That's impossible, sir. Well, let's go fishing. Time to get ourselves some paddlefish. We begin our epic journey by setting sail with Guy Raymond and Steve Kinder on the noble vessel, the Sea Ark. John says goodbye and realizes that he may never see land again. The water is rough, the journey is long. By the end, John is hungry and tired, but his will is strong. Let's join them as they begin the search for the elusive farm-raised paddlefish. This one's 25 feet at the deepest. It's got two places 25 foot deep. We've got another lake that's 25 foot deep and one that's 33 feet deep. That's one of the deepest parts in the lake back here. Is that how you do? You're gonna, we're going to tie the net to a tree and then, yes. then we'll pull drag, it out? We'll pull it out and uh, drop either an anchor or take it all the way to the other side of the bank. OK, so the other, other net tree. just has an anchor? OK. Yeah. I was wondering how that worked. And how big are these nets that we're dropping in? 150 feet by 18 feet. I'm probably so how many times you guys uh, uh, harvest paddlefish a, a season? How many times you actually go out? Two times. Just two times, yeah. huh? How many fish you guys actually pull out at a time? Well, we've done sampling up till now. Oh, so this is your first time to actually really do the harvest? Well, yes. The fish are finally ready. So what's your goal this season? Do you have one or is it just kind of see what you yet. get? This is still a, probably an experimental year, okay? Does the net tie into this rope? Oh, yeah. It's a lot of net. Like, shut up, just let me fish. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, if I was just out with some fishermen, that's what would be way. Like, son, just be quiet until we catch some. <laughs> yeah. How many fish do you anticipate to get caught in this net, roughly, or when you've done it before? You ever been fishing? <laughs> yeah. You never know. <laughs> Still never know, even with a big we, net. We could catch one in 15 minutes. We could catch one in two hours. <laughs> the uncertainty of farm-raised paddlefish fishing is maddening. The water is deep, the nets are huge, but will they be strong enough to contain the might of the domesticated paddlefish? Should John succeed, the reward will be great. Aquaculture was a small industry in late 90s Kentucky, but it is now a powerhouse bringing in millions of dollars each year from paddlefish meat, caviar, freshwater prawns, tilapia, largemouth bass, hybrid striped bass, catfish, and trout. The tasks of fishing can be tedious and nerve-wracking, but along with the frustrations of tangled nets and cold water, John and Guy have also developed a mutual respect for each other, and dare we say, a friendship. That's my favorite part of fishing, is the bass fishing. What's the biggest bass you pulled out of here? Uh, biggest one I've pulled out was uh, six pound, three ounces, but nice. I've had other people pull out 10 pounds. Wow, oh, yeah. that's a big bass. Yeah. Now, do that. you plan on commercialing those at all, yes. or are they just yeah. for fun? No, we're, we're, we plan on trying them commercially. Now, how do you harvest those? Same way, net them? No, they won't net. I'm not sure just yet. I need to work that out. <laughs> And since this water is so pristine, have you gotten some like huge bluegill and crappie out of here? Yeah, yeah, sure have. Two, three pounders. We've caught a four pound crappie out of this thing this spring. You could actually fillet that puppy. Oh yeah. <laughs> we threw it back in though, we're hoping for a state record. I think state record's like uh, four pounds, 13 ounces or something. So, so hoping you're gonna catch him again one day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We, we, take, we do take some out to eat, but not... Uh, Leave the big daddies to go, yeah, huh? Yeah, the ones that's in the trophy range, we like to leave them. Well, that's cool. Leave them here. So you think that you're saying the fish is probably in that corner there, or are we going to get them to run this way? should be out in the center of that in the deeper portion. It's, uh, you know, they're cold-blooded, so what they'll do is try to find the warmest body of water they can get next to. So. I was going to ask you, is there a certain trick to this? A trick? Well, you know, it's wildlife. You never know how to predict <laughs> them. But you try to outsmart them. Like I said, I was pretty interested that, you know, you guys didn't have the little fish finder in the boat. Yeah. To... <laughs> now the fishing starts. All right. So you, wait About for time. Them, you wait for them to come to the net. <laughs> so is that kind of what, what really got you started doing this? Did you enjoy the wildlife and being well, outdoors? Or... Yeah, that helped. But 
I guess what helped is when we bought the property, you know, it's, we've got 150 acres, 75 acres underwater, so, you know, you can't hardly farm, right? Yeah. Fish farm, so we got all the water, so we started, Janine started investigating what to do with uh, the fish, what we could do with water, and that's... Did you think she was crazy when she started doing that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the weird part about it... I tried it several times, but like I said, it ain't... Uh, Chill, aren't we guys? <laughs> wow. That's pretty close to water. <laughs> That's definitely fun. Is it possible to turn the boat? Well possible, yeah, everything's possible. <laughs> Likely probably not. <laughs> Feeling heavy. Feeling nice. Was it fish? Wait. Come on, John. There you go. You want him? Yeah. Just How do I grab him? Grab a hold of the bill. Get in. It'll be slick. It'll be. It won't hurt you. It'll be heavy enough. It's, Put your hand under the other gill there. Right in here? Yeah. They give you a handle, they're so slick. There you go, John. That's fish. Victory at last. The journey was long, the tribulations daunting. In the end, they had paddlefish. Lots of paddlefish. So much paddlefish they could feed an army. A very, very small army. In the end, John wasn't thinking about fame, fortune, or how wet his clothes were. He was thinking about the vast knowledge of Kentucky aquaculture that he had gained. Like knowing that there are over 60 fish farms in Kentucky, all of which use no chemicals or any other unnatural treatments on their fish. So you get the healthiest meat and caviar on the market. Turn them over. She's stuck on this side. You're pretty good at this, John. <laughs> huh? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> now that's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> nice fish, John. Nice fish. Oh, watch the water. <laughs> watch the water back there. A vast catch, an impressive accomplishment, and a tangled net. The elusive paddlefish, not yet ready for harvest, will be released prior to John's return to the mainland. Yep. Go swimming. I'm staying still, go ahead. All that work, catch them, John, now you turn them loose. I don't know. Huh? Hit. They're happy swimming away. I think that was a close call. Next time you will be eating. Ooh, you're a big one. All right, so for any fishermen out there who want to go catch themselves a paddlefish to hang on your wall, here are some helpful tips. A paddlefish is biologically engineered to eat nothing but microorganisms, so conventional fishing methods like rods and hooks won't work. You're going to need to get yourself a net. Nets? Who needs nets? This is how we go fishing on the big world of food. Oh. Now this is how we go fishing. That's a fish. A lovely fish, John. A lovely fish. Make a switch you can bank on with Commonwealth Bank. Right now, open an extreme checking account and we'll give you a cash bonus. Visit switchforcash.com today. Cool Tools is brought to you by The Dine Company. Welcome to another Cool Tools segment brought to you by The Dying Company. We have the Volraf induction range over here. We're going to saute a little bit of vegetables. The reason I like this burner so much is that it works by electromagnetic friction. So uh, it's safe to the touch and it's easy to clean. Over here we have our double walled insulated bowls. What's neat about these is that you can heat them or refrigerate them and they'll hold the temperature for hours. 
It's great for pasta salads, potato salads, especially in the summertime you're worried about things getting a little too warm and it keeps your product safe. And here we have our chafing dishes by Volraff. We have our shaped pans to make things a little more elegant for your holiday parties or special caterings. And we just put our hot vegetables in here along with our salmon. And the neat thing about these too is that you could replace them and put ice in there to keep your shrimp cocktail, your oysters on the half shell chilled and keep your food safe. And these are just some of the many cool tools you hear at the Dine Company. For all of your culinary needs, come to the Dine Company at 3110 Preston Highway or check us out at DineCompany.com. differently leads to something exceptional in an absolute world. Welcome to another exceptional experience brought to you by Absolute. Let's see what exceptional cocktail my award-winning bartender Rory is going to shake up for us today. The cocktail we're making today is the uh, caviar martini kind of a twist on James Bond's drink, the Vesper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Beef Eater, about an ounce and a half of that, about a four count, that's how I do things. We're gonna move on to Absolute. You can use Absolute 80, Absolute 100, any of your favorite Absolute flavors. Again, four count on that. You're gonna give that a nice shake, get it nice and cold. This time shake and not stirred. Pour that into our martini glass. We're gonna garnish this with some locally harvested Kentucky aquaculture paddlefish caviar. Now that is an exceptional cocktail. Take your taste buds on a tour of Kentucky. It's a lot of fun. Watch Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs with host Tim Laird, Saturday nights at 10.30 on WBKI. Tune in to The Barbara Bryant Show, weekday mornings at 6.30 on WBKI CW7. Veronese, eclectic contemporary Mediterranean cuisine, extensive wine list, four seasons patio, exciting atmosphere, fresh Kentucky proud local ingredients, vegetarian friendly, live jazz seven nights a week. For more information, call 502-899-9904. Veronese, 2106 Historic Frankfurt Avenue. Make a switch you can bank on with Commonwealth Bank. Right now, open an extreme checking account and we'll give you a cash bonus. Visit switchforcash.com today. Recipe of the Week brought to you by Kentucky Proud. Now today was a real adventure. I had an opportunity to go to Rocky Ridge Farm for the paddlefish harvest. They were brought me on the boat. We actually had an opportunity to net the fish, bring them in, and discuss about the exquisite caviar and all its wonderful uses. It's amazing how far aquaculture has come along. They now harvest everything from freshwater shrimp, striped bass, tilapia and trout, and many more. And I thought it's such a wonderful recipe to do with the paddlefish. I made a potato encrustation. I've used an apple core to peel the potato, wrap the paddlefish, and lightly fried it. I've used its caviar and a hollandaise to top it with and some fresh sauteed asparagus. And it's such a wonderful dish, nice, light, rich, and flaky. And for this recipe and many more, visit bigworldoffood.com. Until then, I'm your host, Chef John Veronese. And in the meantime, visit me at my restaurant, Veronese, 2106 Frankfurt Avenue. 